Welcome to another edition of What's So Funny, the show that probes the brains, the minds, the psyches, and the brains of the people who make the funny. Tonight's guest is an outdoorsman, a biker, an athlete, a photographer, and a career counselor. And Ryan Hamilton just happens to be a fine stand-up comedian. How does he find the time? And now a man who can find the time, but just can't be bothered. Your host and MC, Mr. Guy McPherson. Thank you very much, Kevin. And uh, Ryan, I didn't know any of that about you. I didn't either. That's a yeah. lot to learn. That's a a career counselor? Learn. Yeah. True facts. True really? facts. I, uh, <laughs> yeah. I think a career, the last person you want as a career counselor is a stand up comedian. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, you had it. Hey, I remember, first of all, Ryan, thanks for coming in. This yeah. is your first time in studio. What do you think? Yes. Wow, what a beautiful place. It's fancy. Isn't yeah. it great? Yeah. Last time we spoke in your hotel room. That's right. But now you get the full What's So Funny uh, treatment. Yeah, this is it. This is the full deal. We got a piano in here. We got some things laying against the wall. Do you play the piano? No, I do don't play the play piano. play any instruments? I played the guitar a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Were you ever in a band? I was never in a band, no. So I'd, just, I'd like to be in a band. Just, but I, music doesn't come easy to me. No. <laughs> no, it's tough. I, uh, I wish I could. I wish I was more musical. I think every comedian wants to be. A rock star. Well, I appreciate it. It was totally fluky. I went to see you at the Comedy Mix last night. We headlined all weekend. Yeah. And uh, I knew you were going to be at the Victoria Comedy Fest, the Blue Bridge Festival. Yeah. This coming week. Yeah, this week. Turns out you're in town on a Sunday night. No one's ever in town on a Sunday night. Yeah, here we are. It worked out great. Yeah, it worked out. Yeah, I had the night off. I didn't know what I was going to do. Let's do the show. Let's do it. We We could stay all night. Yeah. We could do that. That's what. That's what they don't. Apparently, we can just go on and on. Yeah. They, they don't care what we do on this. We'll take over that. Take over that radio station, like that movie. As a stand-up comic, do you have to go? I mean, you're traveling all the time. Do you have to go to like commercial radio stations and morning zoos and yeah, and, yeah, I do and, a lot of that and perform like a monkey for them. <laughs> yeah, I do a lot of that. So you know, do you uh, like it? Sometimes I really like it. Sometimes it's a lot of fun. Other times it's just I don't know. Sometimes it's it, is, it just depends. It's like everything else. It's like, uh, is this a fit for me? But I, I like that it's always different. And 90% of the time, I really I have a great time. Oh, well, that's good. Well, you're a positive guy. Oh, well, thanks. I try to be. Yeah. So you don't go, ugh, I got to do another one of these. No, actually, I like doing radio. I think it keeps me on my toes, and I, I like promoting the shows, anything I can do that helps promote the shows. And it's just fun. It's a different muscle for comedians to learn, you know? So it's something interesting. I like doing it. You have to get up early, but you know you why s- not get up early? Why not? <laughs> you're you're not a, a a carouser. You don't go out drinking and yeah. So do you normally get up early? It's not a big problem for you, is it? Um, I it's it's uh, hard for me to get up super early, but you know I do it more and more. It's like I think everybody has this conception of stand ups that we sleep all day or sleep in every day of our well, life. Well, many of you do. Yeah, but if you're a working comedian on the road, I guess somebody in my at where I am in my career, you are up early often. If you're to catch fl- a plane, yeah, you got to catch a plane like twice a week, and then, and you, then sleep you have on the plane. radio one or two days. Yeah. I, okay, you're sleeping on the plane, but I am saying you get up early, often, and often really early. You know, yeah, it's always an a, a really a early flight. You got to get the first flight in. Often you get the first flight out so you can get home. So I'm up early all the Have time. you ever had... Now, I, I know you like to go out and talk to the crowds after you finish a set. Yeah. Uh, have you ever had someone come up to you and say that they heard you on this morning radio and that's why they came to the show? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Because I always think these things are useless because anyone who's up that early listening to radio isn't staying up late at night going to comedy <laughs> shows. Well, we always I do... I think they're hitting the wrong market. <laughs> we always do radio, you know, Thursday, Friday morning, and then... They may have Friday off and come to the Friday show or Saturday off or Sunday off or something like that. So they're planning their weekend and uh, people are driving to work or whatever. But, yes, some clubs are really big on – I know it helps in a lot of markets. People say, you know, radio is hurting or whatever, but I think it's it's a good skill for comedians to have. And smart comedians promote themselves as often as they can. And and a lot of it's, you know, on the radio. People mm. who are selling a lot of tickets, I think, are good at radio generally. And podcasts. And podcasts also. 
But we're on the air right now. We you know, are. This is like a hybrid show. That's right. It's hybrid. But um, a lot of comics are doing their own podcast to promote themselves. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I haven't done that. But um, Yet? I guess I should. Yeah. I don't know. I, at this point, doing it seems like starting a podcast now is so daunting. Th- two, three years ago, it seemed like there was a chance to break through the fray and have something popular. Now I feel if I did a podcast, most likely it would just be for any of my fans, but it wouldn't necessarily, it'd be difficult to get a podcast going that broke through my fans and created new fans. Word of mouth. Word of mouth, it's true. And then, then that's just me maybe justifying not doing a podcast. But I don't know if I'm great. I would be great at podcasts. And I think you should do what you're good at yeah. and, you know, focus your energies on the right places. And I just don't know if I would be good. You talked uh, right off the top. You said you're, as, well, you said a stand up comic isn't a person who should be a career counselor. <laughs> well, so, yeah. Like, uh, Kevin, oh, is he even listening? I'm always listening. Okay, that's Kevin's good. always listening. What, uh, what was that reference, the career counselor? Oh, I'm just going by, uh, I have uh, photographic evidence. That's your clue. <laughs> He's been spying on me. I have. <laughs> I don't know when. Uh, I've probably given uh, someone career advice at some point. So You claim you had a, I don't know if, what, maybe I misread it, but there was a photo on, uh, you know, your, your all your photos. Yeah. That, I think through the, the Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So there's... you. Do you do a lot of drugs? You can't remember what photos you've taken and, and the little <laughs> I, captions you've no, written I on don't, them? I don't think I do remember. <laughs> you claim that one photo was you being uh, giving, uh, it was career day or something, and you were going oh, yeah, and doing a stand-up, that. so you were advising them yeah. and, like not to become a yeah, it was like, stand-up comedian. It was for like 10-year-old, probably like fourth grade, grade four or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I... Uh, so Kevin Someone asked right. me to come in and do like a career day, and I've done several. You of those. owe him an apology. <laughs> I think you brought this <laughs> I up. I think you both owe me an apology, <laughs> <laughs> Kevin. I'm sincerely sorry that I ever doubted. Screw that, you, that man. You knew Screw more you. about my life than I did. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so you were talking to ten-year-olds uh, on a career day type thing. Yeah, someone at a school asked me. I've done a few of these. I probably I can think of three, but I may have done more where I came in and just. Uh, Someone would ask me if I would, you know, come speak to their students, a teacher, friend, or this. I think the one that Kevin is referring to is someone I didn't even know. They just reached out, somebody who had seen shows, and asked me to come to their school. And um, my mom's a teacher, and I've always admired teachers. So when a teacher asks me to do something, I usually am trying to oblige. You're a good student. Yeah, I try to be. Yeah. Well, I just, I think it's, uh, I don't know. I know how difficult teachers' jobs are and what they do. and, and uh, They're I think, just looking to fill time. Yeah, they're looking to fill time. But also, I think, you know, they're trying to expand their kids. Uh, it, you know, I grew up in a little tiny town. So anytime— Ashton? Ashton, Idaho. Very small. A thousand people. So anytime— 999 now. Yeah, yeah, now that I'm gone. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, it was if you grow up in a small town like that, and maybe it's true in other places. But any pl- time that I got exposed to something like outside of the uh, world of my little town, it, it made a big impact on me. And so I was always grateful to people simil- who did similar things at my schools, or you know, speakers. I remember hearing these things, and and so I think uh, I don't know. I think it's good to do those things for students, if for anybody. Ryan Hamilton giving back to the community. Oh, I'll try it. I don't know. Where, where was I've this? I've done that like three or four <laughs> times in my life. This picture that he talks about, where, what town was it in? I, I believe that was in, uh, if it's the picture I'm thinking of, it was in Salt Lake City. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And what do you tell a group of 10-year-olds about your career? Um, you, so you were saying don't, <laughs> don't become a stand-up? I think the caption, actually, if I remember that tweet, was... Um, Something to the effects of had a very successful career day, convinced all of the students not to become stand-up comedians. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> was that the one? Uh, yeah, yeah, that was it. Wow. See, I have a great memory. I'm recalling <laughs> tweets from like two years ago. Um, I don't, I don't know. I don't have a like a real general like a. Uh, I haven't done this enough where I have a standard outline, but I, I think I've. 
tailored it just to whatever that teacher wanted for that day. But I just talked about what I do, what my day-to-day life is. For p- kids that young, it's just kind of interesting, I think, for, like, what do you do, you know? Yeah. You can be real general and broad. And then I d- would take questions. I They have funny questions, which is entertaining, which I don't remember any now. And then I would do a couple of jokes for kids, which is really <laughs> weird and kind of awkward for me. But it's Any um, from your act? Yeah, I would do okay. jokes from my act for kids. Now I'm thinking of all these times where this is ha- actually this has come up a lot. I've done three career days, and I've done I spoke at my high school graduation, not my graduate, but my alma mater's graduation. They asked me to come back and give it the commencement speech, so I did that. And um, what's the graduating class? Um, How many? Mine was uh, sixty three. Which was one of the biggest ever at that time. Wow. I think the year I did it, it was like 50 something. I don't remember. It's always like, you know, 50 to whatever. And uh, like a year ago, I, I happened to be home in Idaho and they had me speak at the homecoming to get like the students motivated. And that really stressed me out <laughs> because that was the first time I'd ever done anything like that where you had to. This this the this purpose of what I was doing wasn't to just inform people about what I do, but it was to motivate people. You know what I mean? To inspire just in life. Yeah, just in general. It had nothing to do with my comedy career, but they wanted me to get them motivated about life and about homecoming and the new year or whatever. So that was very intimidating and difficult. <laughs> do you think you I'm were not successful? A, I I don't know. I think so, but I, I'm not a. Uh, you know, I'm not a motivational speaker. I'm a comedian. I'm in front of people, but I'm not a motivational speaker, which is a, it's a I fine was t- line, though. <laughs> fine is line. there? I think there's a huge gap. <laughs> Maybe not. You know, but these questions that 10-year-olds had for you, like, what do you do every day? That's anybody who has a, a, a real job, sort of a 9-to-5 job fascinated by anyone who (laughs) doesn't and they they'll ask me what do you do all day you know oh yeah right right so it's it's not just that these kids are asking you yeah and And you gotta think yeah what do i do all day well you and i'm sure you're busy i'm busy Mm, not so much (laughs) i don't know i I bet you're busier than you think you are but no one ever believes that we are doing things right like what did you do well i did this and this and this that was your whole day was like that was a lot i did (laughs) Yeah. For some reason, if you're not in an office with designated time, they're like, like what? Did, you ask people, what did you do at your office all day? It's like, well, you did this and this and this. But for some reason, if I'm sitting at home doing it, it doesn't seem like anything. That's right. I mean, they they take their time doing it, yeah. too. Yeah. They, they might accomplish two or three things yeah. in eight hours. Yeah. They just had to. But they had to sit at a desk yeah, and be they uncomfortable. To, they had to put on khakis and... <laughs> <laughs> Go sit at a desk and do it. Khakis. Feel bad. But what about uh, your life growing up in Ashton, Idaho, population 1,000? What is the industry there? What is? W- it's a farming community, potato farming did, community. Did, oh, really? Potatoes? Yeah. <laughs> I know you, you say that's not all Idaho. It's funny, though. Today on Facebook, a friend of mine had, had taken some pictures in eight western states, and the one that I saw was a potato museum in Idaho. Oh, I've so been they, there. Oh, yeah? Probably. Yeah. Maybe there's more than one. So did you grow up on a farm? No, I didn't. I was. We were one of the few families in the community that weren't a farming family. My, my mom grew up in that town, and my grandfather ran the local variety store. And uh, his... Like a general store? Yeah, like a general store. And his grandmother, or, and my great-grandmother run it, ran it before him. My father's from Southern California, so when we lived there when I was growing up, my my mother uh, was a teacher, and my dad worked at a little power company. He was a lineman when he started there, and he became an engineer eventually and then a manager. So we were one of the f- few families that weren't a uh, farming family. There was others, but, you know. Yeah. He was a lineman for the county? He was a lineman for the county. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> what do, I was, as I was watching you last night at the mix, I was wondering about your dad. Oh really? Are you a chip off the old block? Yeah, I think in a lot of ways I am. Is he is he a funny guy? Is he Yeah, he's a, a funny storyteller? Guy. He's a funny guy. I don't know if I'd call him a storyteller. I don't know if I would call me a storyteller off stage though, either. No. 
But uh, yeah, my dad's a really funny guy. But both my parents are very uh, creative. My dad went to school, studied art, and wanted to be an art teacher, actually. Painting. Painting. Well, he yeah, he was a painter and, and um, um, a lot of ceramics and um, pottery he was into. But he wanted to teach art. And my mom was a writer, and she wanted to write. Hmm. But she became an English teacher, and my dad, you know, had kids and got a job and... But they're both very uh, right-brained, creative people. So they like the direction you took. It wasn't like, no, you got to get a, a real job. Well, I think they're very supportive of it after I went to college. You know, <laughs> because that they I wanted that. Yeah, first. Yeah, and I think after that, if I hadn't have been through college, I don't know if. I mean, they would always have been supportive of me, but I think they were happy that I went to college. What did you study in college? Public relations. Or university, as we say here. Yeah. Uh, Public relations. Yeah. I started in oh, journalism. Oh, I think we talked about that last time. We might have. Because you had a job yeah. in advertising? Yeah, a PR in an ad agency. Yeah. Right. Yeah. McMahon and Tate? Uh, I don't know them. Is that an ad agency? What Kevin's laughing. You're too young to know. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you watch Bewitched? <laughs> oh, well. Mac- McMahon and Tate. That's where, oh, that's where he worked? Darren Stevens worked. Oh, you it was an ad agency? Guy. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm a real bummer. <laughs> <laughs> you rube. Did you get TV on the farm? Oh, you weren't yeah, on a farm, right. I'm sorry. Uh, we live surrounded by farms, though. Now the home that we grew up in town, but we have it when I was like in, I don't know, 14 or something, we moved out of town. So the home that we live in now is just surrounded by farm, farming fields. It's a farmhouse, basically. So your parents are still there? Yeah. Siblings? Yep. Yeah. I have a younger brother and younger sister. And are they creative as well? Yeah. My brother um, went to school, studied art for a while. Um, he still does some art, but yeah, they're creative people. What does my sister do? This maybe my, my sister's very funny and, but she's, she's a big outdoors person. So she studied recreation management, but now she just had a baby and they have jobs and everybody's grown up. Her life's over. It's over. I heard, uh, from Kevin that you're an outdoors person too. But I'm a big outdoorsman. He's been really checking. <laughs> He's been really going over my yep. uh, social media posts. Yep. And <laughs> hey, once you put that out there, anybody can see it's it. It's fair game. It's fair game. Yeah. Yeah, but there's so many Ryan Hamiltons. <laughs> <laughs> Who is your favorite Ryan Hamilton? My favorite? Yeah. Um, Next to yourself. Well, I don't know. I mean, I knew a guy in this is a kind of int- interesting thing when i was in school and i'd started doing stand up there was another ryan hamilton at at my uh college and he was also a comedian and it was crazy he was like a kind of an amateur comedian too so we would get phone calls for each other all the time because people thought we were the same person <laughs> he was doing like more sketch and stuff like that and i was doing stand up this was like the very tail end of my college career. But we were on a couple of shows together. Together, Ryan Hamilton and yeah. Ryan Hamilton. Yeah, and um, we would change our name. Oh, and who would you be? I think he changed his name. I don't remember ever changing my name, but I remember that we didn't go up as the same because <laughs> we didn't know what else to do. Yeah, I mean, Michael J. Fox had to add a J because there was a Michael Fox. Oh, yeah. Right? What's your middle name? Taylor. That's Taylor. my uh, Is my there great a Taylor Hamilton? No, it's my on my mother's side. I'm named for, uh, my great grandfather's name was Taylor. Mm-hmm. But I'm thinking you could change your name now. Oh yeah, yeah. I had to. Um, <laughs> there's a ton of Ryan Hamiltons there's I know. in the world. There's a yeah, hockey it's player. Yeah, there's a hockey player. He comes up on all my searches. There's another Ryan Hamilton who um, owns RyanHamilton.com who um, doesn't use it. And I've spoken to him on the phone once, and he agreed to give me RyanHamilton.com, and then he went back on that offer. And I offered him a bunch of money. How much is it, does it go for? I don't know. It's, I mean, it's worth whatever, I don't know. They go for anything. You know? Right. Because GuyMcPherson.com is taken, too. Is it? But it's not being used. Yeah. What did you offer him, though? How much? I think I offered him... I can't remember. A few thousand bucks. 
Wow. Something like, like that. 50 grand? No, like not that. like that. Not like that. <laughs> That's what he was holding up for. Uh, <laughs> I offered him, I just, I, uh, I wouldn't have done that several years ago, but at this point in my career, it's like, oh, that'd be worth it just to have it because I'll use it forever. And Yeah. Because you know. now your website is? RyanHamiltonLive.com. Live. Is what I, it used to be RyanHamilton.tv, which I thought at the time would be a good thing. And then um, everybody was just always confused. Like, I've never heard of that. I got tired of saying it on the radio because every time I would say it, to be like .tv. So I figured I have to get a .com. So I got RyanHamiltonLive.com. I like your uh, Twitter handle. Ryan Hamilton. Tone. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think you change everything to that. Hamilton. Yeah. Hamilton. I should get. <laughs> Sounds a little like. Hamilton. <laughs> yeah. People have said that. I don't know what to do. I guess I could get Ryan Hamilton. There's a Ryan Hamilton Twitter that's uh, just kind of doesn't. It's just sits. Uh, nobody uses it. Too late now. Yeah. I can't get it, but no. nobody uses it. You can curse your parents. Yeah. They didn't know at the time. I think at the time, Ryan was just a, you know, it's one of those names. It wasn't that popular. And then it became how how about R.T. Hamilton? It sounds classy. R.T. Hamilton? Yeah. yeah, we could do that. R.T. It yeah. sounds like, hey, R-T. look, hey, R.T. He's R.T. 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 How about R.T. Hamilton? R.T. Hamilton. It's too late. I needed to do this like uh, 10 years ago. Yeah, is that when you started? Yeah. Right out of college? Yeah. Which college? Uh, Brigham Young University. Brigham Young, uh, what's their nickname? Don't tell me. Their nickname? Yeah, every like the sports team has a their mascot. Well, no, their their team name. Yeah, the the Brigham Young oh, yeah. Rebels. No, oh yeah, it's not the Rebels. <laughs> no, <from Brigham Young. laughs> yeah. what is it? Devils? The Cougars. <laughs> oh, the Cougars. Yeah. Okay. I, why I didn't know that. Yeah, it's in the mountains. Like uh huh. Yeah, it's like a mountain lion type of cat. So you you went. You wanted to become a uh, you know a. No, you wanted to become a stand-up comic. You were just going to college because your parents said you should really well, have something I didn't to fall know. back. No, I didn't know I was going to. I never really intended to make comedy a career. I was just doing it for fun. I loved it. And I never thought of it as a career, really. I, I Originally, I was going to. Be, I wanted to be in journalism and be like a... Like me? Like a newsman. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a newsman. Do people say that still? <laughs> yeah. I wanted to be a newsman. A scribe. Yeah. But I used to write. I, you know, I think my dream job when I was probably 13 or whatever would have been to be like a funny call, like Dave Barry. That was what I wanted to be. What's Dave Barry doing now? He's still writing. Yeah. He writes books. He had a novel that came out like a year ago or something. He still writes his column every week, I think. I follow him. I don't read it anymore, but I used to. It was kind of like influential on me. I used to read it all the time, and I thought mm-hmm. this guy's funny, and I loved it. Yeah, and I he could be very funny. Yeah, yeah. But it's it's hard doing a weekly thing like that because you're not going to hit every single time. Yeah. Oh, sure. Like yeah. anything creative, almost. You know. Mm-hmm. But yeah, doing a weekly thing—that's a lot of pressure. But. Uh, I would read that every Sunday. That was one of the things that, like, in my little town, I felt like, oh, this is, I don't know why I connected with that, but that was just something in our family that we kind of would read and the, when the paper was sitting around, and I liked it. And also Far Side cartoons yeah, were the those other were thing. Yeah, great. Yeah. Gary Larson? Yeah. Is that why you moved to Seattle? Uh, I know. I would love to know more about that guy. He's like an enigma. Because he just quit. Yeah, which I kind of respect. Top of his game. Well... Well, that's the best way to do it. Is it? I think the best way is to ride it out till nobody likes you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> now, all the stuff that's legendary, all the stuff that's great, it all quits. It, uh, they, they, that's part of the, that's part of the uh, mystique. The, yeah, you, you quit when you're ahead. Seinfeld's show. Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan. Sure, I bet we could come up with more. <laughs> If That's we it. really worked at it. <laughs> That's it. Shakespeare. So when did you decide uh, that it was a career? Um, what well, was the, what was the turning point where you go, wait, this isn't just something for fun. I can do this. I uh, I lost my job. I don't know if I ever would have quit my job to do comedy. I I don't know if I had that the guts to do that. I lost my job. At where the was ad, the job? This was at the ad agency in Salt Lake City. Okay, and. Um, I got laid off, and there was it was like during that whole tech boom or the tech bubble burst or whatever, and the we lost clients and 
And I, I was kind of disillusioned, uh, too. I was, I'd worked really hard to get at this agency, and they're real creative, and I loved it. And I really loved studying, and in college, I loved what I was doing. And then after a year there, I just felt like, I don't know if I want to do this anymore. And uh, I'm still friends with all of those people at the agency. I go back and visit them. But I think they also helped me make that decision <laughs> in a way. You know, I think they knew I wasn't happy. And I was doing comedy. I'd talk about it a lot. But um, so I got laid off. I lost my job. And I, uh, I remember being devastated. And you didn't try to find another job no, in the I field? No, was, I was looking. Yeah, I was yeah. looking. But I was kind of lost, too. I was kind of like, I don't know what to do. And I was just doing comedy for fun. And then I started to get offered some work, um, like filling in, doing these awful one-nighters. People, I, I had some time and some severance money. So I was just... I think somebody canceled or something, if I remember it. I don't remember exactly what happened, but there was an opportunity to go do a run of one-nighters, and I had 15 minutes, and I needed half an hour, but they needed somebody. And I was out of Salt Lake, and the gigs happened to be kind of close to Salt Lake. And I went and did it. And I made a little, not a lot of money, but I came home with a little money, and I was also working as a parking valet in the interim while I was looking for another job. So I did that for a few months, and I started to just kind of Use comedy to make money while I was looking for another job, just to be like, ah, if I can make a little money doing this, I'll do it. And then tied you over, yeah. While I was looking for another job, and then I thought, um, hey, maybe what hap- what about if I just jumped into this for a year and just see what happens? And that's when I moved to Seattle, and I decided to do that. And I said, I'm going to give myself a year and just see what happens because if I don't do it now, I'll never do it. I didn't have anything really t- tying me down, you know. I I was poor. But I always knew I could come back and look for a job at any point in my life. But why Seattle? It would be tough to make a living as a comic in Seattle, wouldn't it? Yeah, I just needed someplace I could get on stage every night. And I wasn't doing that in Salt Lake City. And there was great because stage time. But there just weren't like enough little rooms and things. And also, I could make more money at that level doing these one-nighter gigs opening and one-nighter gigs. They were, there was a lot of them around the Northwest. And these bookers who I'd been working for out of Salt Lake City were all based in Northwest. So if I moved to Seattle, I could satellite out and do these one-nighter gigs. Those are the only connections I had in comedy. So I knew that I could hopefully make a little money if I was up there, plus I could get on stage every night. And that's why I went to Seattle. And you did make a little money. And how many years did you stay in Seattle? Just one year. That's one all year. I was there. Yeah, it and wasn't then long. you moved to? I moved back to Salt Lake. But oh, okay. I was on the road a lot more, and I started to just be going the other direction in the country. So I was work- I was driving a lot at that time. I would dr- do these crazy drives to, like, Ohio and Minneapolis and stuff like that and, and um, all over the place. And uh, at that time, you could – it was – seemed more reasonable to get in your car and drive for a comedy gig it doesn't seem as reasonable anymore for some reason (laughs) but at that time that's kind of what you did it was like this was right when you know myspace was just starting there wasn't a lot of ways to break into comedy unless you were actually just doing it so that's what people in the west and the northwest that's what they were doing they were doing one-nighter road gigs and so that's what i was doing so i would just get in the car and go so i moved back to salt lake and i'd also kind of broken into doing um, some corporate work, and I was getting that in Salt Lake just for whatever reason. I had connections there, and I was getting a little bit of that work. So I was just kind of bouncing around. And then know. how long in Salt Lake before you moved to the Big Apple? Uh, well, I've been in New York now six years, so I don't know. I was back in Salt Lake for a few years, yeah. And now look at you. Now look at me. Yeah. I'm still <laughs> still uh, trying to figure things out. You're a big star in Canada. Canada has been very good to you. Canada has been really great to me. I love it here. I don't know how it happened. I don't know how all this Canada stuff happened, but it just seemed to happen, and I love working up there. Just for Laughs Festival, probably. Yeah, that helped a lot. But I did other things, too, you know. Yeah, but Just for Laughs helped a lot. I've done the festival a bunch of times, and then I did their national tour. Um, But I've done other festivals. I did the Halifax Festival, and I did the Investors Group national tour all over Canada. Yeah. Whatever I, that is. Yeah, they do a tour every year. I'm not giving investors oh, wait a, a second. plug. Oh, but not just corporate work? That is for the public? 
Well, in a, in a way, it's for the public. It's it's for their customers. So they do okay. it, they do it right. all over the country. So anyway, I'm just saying I've done like yeah several national a couple of national tours with Canada, one through just for laughs and one through them, and I'm very grateful for all the work in Canada. I, I well, really our, enjoy it. Yeah, we're we're talking with Ryan Hamilton from Ashton, Idaho. Mm-hmm. And uh, the show is What's So Funny. I'm Guy McPherson, station CFRO 100.5 FM. And sometimes our listeners go, I wonder what this guy's actually like on stage. So we're going to play a clip. This is you either in Montreal or Halifax. Okay. I, I think it might be Halifax. Okay. Do you know? Well, I don't know. What is it? I don't know. <laughs> we'll find out later. <laughs> here's here's uh, oh. Ryan and Hamilton. And we'll see if it actually works here. So. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. I think it will. Right. I, I'm, I'm pretty hopeful. Okay. okay. I live in New York City now, and uh, when you move from Idaho, very smooth transition, I got to say, first of all. Um, <laughs> I find that New Yorkers understand that places like Idaho exist, but really don't believe in them. You know, uh, I might as well be from Narnia in their head, really. I, I get this a lot. Where are you from? Idaho? Why? <laughs> I don't know. That's where I done been born. That's why. That's where God done birthed me. And then I flip my suspenders and I run away because I'm scared of them. I see things in New York that I didn't see growing up. I saw this guy on the train wearing cat-eye contact lenses. That was his look. Just looking like a cat for the day. That, that was what he was into doing. I, I've never seen anyone back home in Idaho tooling around on their tractor looking like a cat. But that was this guy's look, and nobody seemed to care. Everybody's like, oh, yeah, that's the cat guy. Yeah. <laughs> this is really weird to me. It's so weird. And here's the thing about that look. It's, it's not an accident. <laughs> like, you've got to put some preparation into this look, you know? Like, I might put on the wrong pants and shirt combination, but I don't walk out of the house, catch myself in the mirror, and go, oh, I look like a man cat again today. <laughs> again with the man cat. And there's no practical purpose behind this look at all. Like, the only thing I can come up with, maybe if you're crossing the street in the dark, it might come in handy then, right? If you see, like, a six-foot man kitty in your high beams, you're going to slow down for that guy because he's a human being and he will mess up your grill, you know? I, I think he wants attention, maybe. So, um... I got down. I looked him right in the cat eyes, right? I got down mano y gato. I looked him right in the eyes... I just went. Her kitty, kitty, kitty. Her kitty, kitty, kitty. He didn't laugh at all. Not even a little bit. I thought that was hilarious. I think he was bummed out or something. So uh, I pulled out my laser pointer, and he had a lot of fun with that. Like, he was like all over the place, you know. Yeah. Running into things. Ah! Ryan Hamilton. And he, that was Ryan Hamilton recorded, he told, told me, in Halifax at the Halifax Comedy Festival. And he's in studio with us here this week because Ryan, who just played the comedy mix on the weekend in Vancouver, is heading over to play the Blue Bridge Comedy Festival in Victoria. You're heading over there Tuesday. Shows all week, right? Yeah. Yep. That's right. Yeah. Second time in Victoria. I think third time. Third time in Victoria. Yeah. You're, yeah, you've been all over this country. Yeah. I love it. Yes. Well, here's the thing. You say I love it, and you kind of have to. Why? I don't know, because you're speaking to people here. Oh. Like, do you ever go to town and you have to lie and go, I love it here. This is great, and you're in the middle of... No, sometimes I really just attack the town. <laughs> Do you? <laughs> because people know. They know that it's a hard place to live. I mean, I grew up in a place that people would attack, you know, I and people do all the time. But uh, there are certain things about it that I l- love. Right. But there are a lot of people who just would never be able to live there or understand. So I kind of come at it from, I know, I think, 
why people live in places that seem undesirable. Oh, yeah. Why is that? I think it's, you know, it's family and it's familiar and um, it's ties. You always think, oh, I can just get up and leave and go wherever I want. And that's true to a certain case. But there's history about place, you know, where you grew up and where you live. And mm-hmm. uh, you can't just abandon that all the time. So there's I've, – I've travel. I, I feel like one of the things that I've personally learned just traveling around – and I really haven't traveled internationally, so I haven't seen a lot of the world. But in North America, I've been a lot of places. And I, I feel like – you can be happy almost anywhere. You know, it's more about the people around you, what you're doing, than it is about your actual surroundings, which can be amazing and can add a lot to your life. But just that isn't going to make you happy, which seems real simplistic. But I think, you know, that's why people live places that seem like no one would want to live. They're happy. Yeah. I've, I've often thought that I could live just about anywhere as long as there's indoor plumbing, mm-hmm. uh, you know, the creature comforts, I yeah. guess. And, and these days, too, even if you don't have those community tie or family ties there, you got Skype. Yeah. You got email. You got te- yeah. You're close. I mean, it, it's, right. it's not we're not in the same room, but it's a lot easier than when you had to take out the pen and write a letter to somebody yeah. and wait two weeks to get a response. Yeah. It's true. It, that does help a lot. Yeah. But um, you're right. When I say I love it here, there's parts of Canada that I don't love as much as other parts, for mm-hmm. sure. But Vancouver, we're in Vancouver now, so I'm in a good place in terms of like liking the city that I'm in. Yeah, and you get to go on the ferry on Tuesday. Yeah. That's a first. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't done the ferry here yet. No, I yeah. have not done that. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. The ferry is just always pretty. It is pretty. Yeah. Yeah, because you've been on other ferries. Yeah. Hey, I, at your show last night, I was talking to you as people were piling out. It was after the show, we should say. They weren't piling out while you were on the stage. <laughs> and uh, that is kind of brave because sometimes comedians stand there and people sort of awkwardly nod and walk by. But I heard more, it's like everybody was coming up to you saying what a great show it oh, was. Oh, that's so nice to say. But do you ever have it where it's just a little awkward? Yeah, I mean, I don't stand out there and greet people every show, but I try to most of the time. And part of the reason is I don't, I don't I'm not selling any merch. I've yeah, never done that. Yeah, you weren't hawking anything. Yeah, so I just feel like... There's not an opportunity. If anybody did want to talk to me for whatever reason, there's really not an opportunity for them to come say hi. Like most shows, or most club shows anyway, the headliner's over there and has something. So there's an opportunity to have an interaction. So I just like to stand there and thank people for coming because, I don't know, I appreciate it when people come. It means, I mean, that's my whole career and push is to be like, Oh, thank you for coming. That's the only thing I, I'm trying to do is to get people to come to shows. So I'm very grateful when people come. So I feel like I want them to have the best experience. So I just feel like that's part of it. That's part of the whole thing is having some sort of personal interaction with the performer if you if you want it. You know what I mean? And I think any live performances like that, you know, I in New York, I'm always amazed. I walk by these huge Broadway shows and there's always a line of people outside of the on the side door of the theater and they always come out and they take time to see people and greet and oh do they that's a huge production yeah mm-hmm. and i enjoy it too it's fun to meet people and there's usually somebody in the show that i've talked to before or some have some sort of you know personal connection whether it's distant or not that i want to say hi to anyway but so. then you get somebody monopolizing your time when other people want to talk yeah that happens too yeah you have yeah I don't know. There's no way around it. I'm sorry about that. Oh, you're talking about yourself? <laughs> no, but... Yeah. Oh, no, As no. As I said it, I was thinking, well, that's exactly what I did. Oh, no, but I wanted to talk to you. I yeah. didn't even know you were in the show. See, so if I wouldn't have come out, maybe I wouldn't have even... I mean, you probably would have let I me know. I would have hunted you down. Yeah. Yeah. But I didn't know you were in the audience until I came out there. Yeah, but no, I, really, I've never seen so many people come up and compliment a performer after a show at a comedy club. Oh, thanks. Like they did. Thanks. Yeah, I don't know. It was uh, they were fun shows here. They were fun shows. Yeah. 
And, yeah. uh, you know, I hope to see you again in Thank Victoria because I'll be coming over there. But, oh, yeah, cool. I just imagine you could be – it is a vulnerable position to put yourself out there. I guess it is anyway on stage, but then afterwards to have them filing past you <laughs> as you're standing there. Yeah, sometimes it's weird, and sometimes I feel like – sometimes it feels a little arrogant even. I don't know what to do about that because sometimes I feel like people – are being like, is he just waiting for compliments, or why is he out here? Oh, you're overthinking. Maybe. Yeah. But I, I don't know what to do. I usually opt for it's better to go out there and just thank people for coming than not. So, But some shows I don't do it. I'm just tired or whatever. Yeah. Or it's cranky. You know, or, yeah. Or sometimes it's the turnover is so tight that there's just the lobbies all crammed full of people, mm-hmm. and it's hard to do. Hey, this week, last week... At the end of the show, I said this week we would have an interview with Brian Regan. And then it turns out, well, Brian is in town, so we're going to have him on live. And Brian Regan will be on next week. And uh, it's funny because you actually opened for Brian Regan or have opened for him. Yeah, I've worked with him twice. Twice. Yeah. So in in effect, you're opening for him on this show. (laughs) Again, because he'll be on next week. Um, Well, that's a real honor. (laughs) Yeah, <laughs> but that's, I, mean, I think that's just an amazing show to go, and there you are opening, and there's Brian Regan. Like, that would be uh, I, I, it's the best. Been, yeah, it's been really fun. Uh, the, the times I've been able to work with him, he's been a lot of fun, and he's just a real genuine, nice guy. And it's just, to me, watching him work is just a real treat. That's the, just to see him live and... I did a corporate event with him. That was real interesting to me to see him in that environment. Is he different than when he's doing a concert show? Well, we're all different, I think. It was fun to see him work in different circumstances than I'd ever seen him work before. But it's always interesting to see, for me to see almost anybody work. I've been working with um, Drew Carey also. I see that on your website, ryanhamiltonlive.com, that uh, you... You're working a lot with Drew Carey. Yeah, we've done probably uh, four weekends together, and we've got a few dates this fall. And uh, how did you come together with him? I don't know exactly. Seems like an odd pairing. How it happened? Oh, does it? I I um, really enjoyed it. I think uh, I think. Well, we have the same agency, so I don't know how it came about exactly. He may have gone to the agency and asked for some options or something like mm-hmm. that. I don't know, but. Um, I'd but never, I'd an, never met him before, so this uh, we we met for the first time working together. So I'd never, I'd never met him. But uh, that would be another good show because I was impressed with his stand-up when oh, I saw him great. here within yeah. the last year. Oh yeah, he's great. You know, he's yeah. not just cashing in on the Price no. is Right. He's written material, stand-up yes. material. They're not all just stories about Price is Right, yeah. although there are some, and they're pretty funny too. Yeah. Yeah. And again, I'm speaking for someone that, you know, speaking for him, but I really feel like he is just in watching him those weekends that I've worked together, that he's doing this to uh, create something good. He, that's his whole point is he wants to, he hadn't done stand up for a long, long time. So mm-hmm. for him to come back, I think he was motivated by creating good, good stand up and not just selling tickets or whatever well so, yeah who knows if that's the yeah case. it seems more popular but, now the more people want to go back to it who haven't done yeah it. yeah but i know he's definitely you know i think he's he, he's working very hard at it mm-hmm. i can say that but um anyway i don't know but yeah it's been real it's been i'm real grateful to be able to work with those guys it's been a lot of fun and did you also open for jay leno no i've never opened for jay leno where did i read that I don't know. Hmm. I've met him a f- couple times. Yeah. But I've never worked with him. Oh. Yeah, I never have worked with him, but he's been real nice to me. I've never, I've never, I've just met him in L.A. a couple times, but I've never, never worked together. Well, then scratch that from the record. Never I guess opened. you can't believe everything you read online. We may have been on stage, actually, at the same time uh, at Comedy and Magic Club or something at one point. You know, right. he does a show there every Sunday night. That's where I've met him before. And they may have had me do a set or something. He does a show every Sunday night there. Yeah. And I've seen him do his concert shows here. And it seems like the same act for the last 20 years or so. 
But is, is he updating it on the weekly? He does a bunch show? of uh, he does a lot of um, late night. Oh, he's monologue. testing out the monologue. Yeah, he right, does monologue right. jokes. Yeah, yeah, got it. Hey, now, I, now this one I'm sure is true. You saw Mitch Hedberg. Yeah. When you were just starting out? I hadn't even started comedy you Hadn't yet. started comedy. Yeah. And I, it was a huge... I didn't even know his name, but I'd been watching him on Letterman. And I'd seen a few of his Letterman appearances, and me and my college roommates were big fans of his. And um, I was doing an internship in New Hampshire outside of Boston, and I would go into Boston on the weekends. And this was right before I graduated college, the summer before. And... I was just walking by a comedy club, me and a friend of mine, one of my college buddies, actually, who would come out to visit me for a weekend. And he was his headshot was up at the comedy club. We're like, we got to see this. And because they, you recognized him. Yeah, There's we just, that guy. That, that guy. I didn't know his name at yeah. the time. But, uh, yeah. And as I remember it, they had, like, two seats left or something. Mm-hmm. And we got in, and we just barely got in and walked in and... I remember. I just. I remember being amazed at how hard people were laughing. Mm-hmm. I still have. I can picture in my head this woman, over to my left, who was just doubled over <laughs> laughing. I was like, "This is amazing!" And I thought, "I want to try this." I'd always. I. I had tried it before when I like, four or five years before I'd done it like once or twice when I was eighteen, but I went. I'd never seen it live. Oh, that was the I first. just did it, and then yeah. So then I that was the first I saw it live, was when I saw um, Mitch Hedberg. So, <laughs> you know, yeah. your first live show was Mitch Hedberg. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty yeah. good. Yeah, it was downhill from yeah. then, but yeah. you know, yeah, it was amazing. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and then I saw him uh, one other time when he came to Salt Lake City, maybe a couple of years after. But I was doing comedy at that point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now you say people just doubled over. Well, they were probably high or drunk. <laughs> now, Ryan. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. Were you laughing that hysterically? Um, I remember laughing hard, but yeah. I remember being amazed at how hard people were laughing. Mm-hmm. So I don't think I was laughing as hard as that. But I, I don't. I think that's an interesting comic trait. Is comics, and I wasn't a comic at the time, but I was drawn to the whole mystique of comedy and comics like watching the audience more <laughs> as much or as more as the comedian sometimes i think when you're in the crowd yeah when you're just watching a show just watching how people react yeah i have i've had numerous conversations with comedians about this and i always find myself catch myself doing it like there's a show going on but i'm just scanning the audience and i'll sometimes i'll just pick somebody out and just be like he didn't laugh at that, but he laughed at that. It's so interesting, you know? <laughs> what, is what does that say about this, him? Yeah, what is making, what is motivating him to laugh? It's interesting to watch the Don't you the think audience. sometimes it's just whatever's going through their head and maybe they lose focus for, for a minute and miss something? Maybe, but there's sometimes, and then there are other people who go to shows and they can be surrounded by people who are just dying laughing and are... It's almost like they're oblivious. There's no show going on. They have no reaction at all. <laughs> it's really interesting, I think, to just... Wa- I, I, I just find myself doing that all the time. Rather than experiencing the comedian. Yeah, and maybe it's because, you know, most of the time I've seen the person's act already before yeah. or something. But So I'm looking at other things. Well, but. You'd uh, enjoy watching Guy watch a show then. <laughs> <laughs> I'm one of those people <laughs> you, sitting you, amongst you, everybody laughing and you're thinking, is he not enjoying this? Yeah, but you're so close to comedy. That's how comics are too. You've seen so much of it. Some, and you're, some are great laughers You're writing though. about it. Yeah. So it's hard to make people within the industry laugh. True. I don't know. if I mean, I've known Kevin from long before I wrote about comedy. And we used to go to punchlines before that. Did I laugh much then? I, you know, I never really even thought about it until you started bringing it up. And I was like, oh, well, yeah, I guess you don't. Bring it yeah, up. I know people yeah. bring it up. But I, yeah. Oh, this is something that people say all the time to you? A lot of comics. Well, they think I don't like them because I'm not laughing. Oh. But that's not true. Eh? It may be right. true, but it but it's not necessarily true because I'm not laughing. <laughs> it's a good cover. You've yeah, got it's a great cover. No, but I do remember as a as a child 
not liking the laughter because I wanted to hear the next line. Oh, like right. people in the room would be laughing at yeah. the TV. You know, Shh, I want to, you know, I don't want to miss the tag. Yeah, right. You're studying. It. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's that's why. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, but uh, so Ryan, you don't drink, and y- have you ever had alcohol? Did you ever go out drinking? No. So, but but you you know you go out for drinks. I heard somebody say last night, "Oh, hey, yeah. you go for drinks." I go, "Well, what would you do?" Yeah. Because then I said, "Well, you could have uh, you know juice or pop." And yeah. You, you said, "I don't like sugar either." I don't drink. I know it's really weird when I what start do you talking do? about you, this. Have a water. I will have a soda if I'm in a social situation like that. I have a soda, but. I, that's really the only time I drink a soda. It was in that scenario. I just don't drink because a you lot. have to have something. Yeah, it feels weird to order a water, <laughs> and I feel bad for the bar and the server, and yeah, you know. So I order a soda, and um, then I end up drinking it really quickly, and I drink it like I'll have like a bunch of sodas. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you don't drink alcohol. Yeah. You, yeah. you immediately go Addictive to... Addictive personality. Yeah. yeah, yeah, probably. I have wondered that, like, maybe it's good I don't drink. I don't know. Yeah. But I don't know that it's... Who knows? I don't know. I, I, don't, have a, I don't have a problem with people drinking. Well, because it's not you. Yeah, I Why would care. you? Yeah, but sometimes people, I think, since I've never drank or whatever, they're like, is it... I've had people go, can I, you know... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a drink. Is that, you yeah, know, right. It's like they want my permission or you something. You should say it's no like, one time. Yeah, no, I feel like... You know what? <laughs> Normally I'd say yeah. it's okay, but yeah. today I'm just feeling, <laughs> nah. No, I know. It doesn't, it's, you know, it's no, it's nothing. It's just, it's, well, it's my own thing. Yeah, you're around it a lot. Yeah, I'm around all the time. Yeah, And you're and you're essentially selling it. You're peddling it from the stage, <laughs> oh, aren't you? I mean, uh, really, <laughs> if you get down to it, yeah, alcohol is probably paying my, uh, making, you know, paying, giving, is my income. When yeah. It's like the comedy clubs are, you know, there aren't many comedy clubs I think could survive without alcohol, probably. I don't know the business behind it. But there are some that don't do a lot of alcohol. Oh, really? Yeah. All in Utah? Well, in Utah, the clubs serve beer, but that's all. Well, that's alcohol. That's alcohol, but they don't. <laughs> I but think they, so. But it is, isn't it? Yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yes, sure. it's alcohol. It, well, mind you, it. it's American beer. Oh, I'm just, so there's oh, not God. much alcohol. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just saying from a business standpoint, <laughs> I think, I don't know, but I, I think that uh, that's not the most the highest profit margin alcohol that no, you can okay. sell, right? It's the lowest. Yeah. So um, it's root beer. <laughs> Ginger beer. So they're not, you know, they're doing their but their business models may be a little different than some clubs that would sell a wider range. But I don't know. I mean, you know, there's some people who say to me, "Oh, I didn't know you drink," because I don't always. Yeah, it's, it's not a thing. Sometimes, yeah. Maybe. So people say, "Do you drink?" I'll go, "Well, I don't not drink." Right, right. But to say I drink makes it sound like. I drink. Right. Oh, like yeah, regularly. Yeah. I'm ready to go. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Let's go out. So I don't not drink. Right. Yeah. But you couldn't be like that because you would just guzzle them all. Maybe. Would, I yeah. don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe I, I would have enough. Uh, for, I, don't, I don't know. I've just never. It's a weird conversation. For, I don't. I feel weird about it because I. Well, you should. Like, you're never. <laughs> you've never been drunk. You've never been. You don't know what that is. I'm like, I don't. I don't. I don't know what that is. Yeah. But, I don't know. You shouldn't feel weird about that. The other thing is, like, uh, you know, I'm old enough now where it's like, I've, I've asked people, you know, kind of facetiously, so should I start drinking? And they're like, no, you've missed it. It's over. It's not like you can't you can't start when you're my age. It's a young man's game. Yeah, not that I would want to, but it's just like it's an interesting <laughs> thing to think about. It's like it's, that's I, right. It's kind of it's a phase, and if you go through it, then it's over. You've you right. missed it. I have never smoked pot. Really? That's true. Have you? No. Yeah, I never have. No. Nope. And then, so it gets to the point. Got to the point where people like, well, you should try it. And I go, but why now? Yeah. Why would I? Right. Yeah, it's the same thing. Well, you might like it. Well, I don't want to like it. <laughs> right. <laughs> what right. if I do like it? Yeah, right. That wouldn't be good. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, yes. So, uh, and Ryan, we talked about this last time you were on the show. You are. Uh, Latter Day Saints yeah. person, yeah. a Mormon. The uh-huh. other day, a couple of weeks ago, I was walking home, and these two delightful young men 
approached me and Did I used it. <laughs> well, they were. I, I like talking to them. I probably yeah. stopped and talked for 20 minutes. One was from Salt Lake City. Uh-huh. And the other one, I forget where he's from. He was American, too. <clears throat> and we talked and we talked about this and that, not just religion. Yeah. And then it came down to, well, you know, you should, you know, come. They challenged me to a game of basketball. Really? Yeah. <laughs> he said, you come to our church and, and we'll play basketball. And if if we win, then you have to listen to us. <laughs> and I said, well, what if I win? Because I pretty much, I think I would win. Yeah. Although I've seen the videos of Mormons dunking and they're pretty good. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. 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 There's one. Um, we didn't decide what would happen if I won, but I, oh. uh, but I didn't go. But I do like talk to them. And so were you a missionary? Yeah. Two years? I did that for two years, yeah. Where did you... Where were you sent? Because you don't get to choose, do you? No. This is what's fascinating. I was talking to them about yeah. it. Yeah. I was in uh, North Carolina. Oh, that's not so good. It wasn't real. It's not real <laughs> exotic or exciting. Because you could go all over the world, could Anywhere in the world, so yeah. So North Carolina, what's, what town, what city? I was in the western half of North Carolina. So uh, I was in a, you know, a few different cities, but I was in up in the mountains for a while, and I was in Charlotte for a while. I was in Greensboro for a while. And they can just move you with a day's notice or something. Well, you know, it's you're there like for, they have a, a day where everybody kind of moves around once a month. And you may stay in the area for months at a time, but there's one day every month where they kind of transfer people around. So... Um, uh, yeah, people get shifted around on that mm-hmm. one day. It's not so you know that it's coming. It's not like you go, you get a call and be like, "You're going here now." Like the you have a few days. They the week of, you know, I'm probably going to be moved, and then you find out where you're going, and they move you to another city. But, and you're just open to wherever, or do you have your fingers crossed? Oh, I hope I get to. Well, go. I mean, you're in this it's pretty small geograph as far as where I was. It was oh, the western it's in, half of that. North. Carolina. Okay. So I wasn't going to get shifted somewhere else in the world or right. something. I was going to be, you know, within a few hours. Or For the two years. Yeah. Just yeah. in North Carolina. Yeah. And did you feel comfortable going up and talking to strangers? No. No. It's very difficult. <laughs> well, with these two that I talked to, one was the really outgoing young uh-huh. guy, and the other guy was pretty quiet. Yeah. So you're always with somebody else. Were yeah. you the quiet one, or were you the one um, initiating the conversation? A lot of times. I mean... They have, you know, when I first got there, I was brand new. It was really difficult and hard. And then by the end, I'd done it a lot, and I really started to actually enjoy it a lot and and um, made a lot of friends. And Maybe that's why you're comfortable talking to the crowd as they file out. Oh, maybe. Yeah. Maybe so. Yeah. I do like meeting people, you know? Mm-hmm. And maybe it's from that. Yeah. But... Uh, yeah, uh, you know, if you do it for two years all day, every day, you kind of you, you get over it, whatever it was. But it, it's still, it, it's it's hard. It's just there's a lot of hard things about doing that. And talking to people was one of them, you know. <laughs> but uh, I asked the guys if people were rude to them ever. And he said, no, they're, they're, you know, they may not be interested, but they're pretty polite and they just carry yeah. on. Did anyone, was anyone uh, really rude? Oh, yeah, sure. I mean, you spend that much time, in, um, you know, in front of that many people, just numbers-wise, you're going to get some people <laughs> who are rude. <laughs> so, yeah, there was some people. But generally, people are very kind, especially there in the South. It's like people are very nice. But, yeah, there were moments where we get stuff thrown at us on our bicycles. Oh, well, that's, <laughs> stuff that like goes that. beyond being rude. Yeah, that's the, that, that would happen. But it's... Uh, you were on Whatever. bicycles? Yeah. Oh. Not the whole time, but yeah, there were certain areas where we would, that was our main mode of transportation for certain parts of my, yeah, I had a bike that I was take from city to city. And sometimes we had a car though, too. And then sometimes we would have a bike. Sometimes we had a car and a bike. We would use the bike for close stuff and then we would use the car when we needed it. Do you yeah. look back fondly on those two years? Yeah, I do. I mean, it was, uh, it was quite an adventure, you know? And I learned a lot about myself. I really think it's one of the hardest things I ever did, but also just one of the most um, kind of intensive, infusing life lessons sort of things that I did, you know? 
I think I've never, you know, I was never in the military, but it's it's not like the military in a lot of ways. But in a it's lot of ways, they're throwing things at you. Yeah. In a lot of ways, it is. It's like there's a lot of discipline involved because you don't. You're getting up. You have a set schedule, and you go to bed early. You get up early. You're studying several hours a day, and then you're out working the rest of the day. And you, you kind just, of have to wear a uniform. Yeah, you kind of have to wear a uniform. What's the deal with the tie? Do you get to choose your own tie? Like yeah. The, yeah, but there's a dress standard. You know, you wear a dark suit, white shirt, tie, haircut. But the it. tie can be flashy. That's what, I, that's what I'm yeah, most yeah, curious yeah. about. You, could, yeah, you, you can, can get jazz it up with some could, patterns and stuff. You can stuff. express yourself well, you with can. the tie a little that's bit. That's what yeah. I think is yeah. always happening. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, did you wear a real tie or a clip-on? I wore a real tie, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, I wore a real tie. And, um, yeah. What was your pattern, your go-to pattern on the tie? I don't remember. I mean, we would all do... Checks, stripes. We would do all sorts of stuff. Little wacky yeah. uh, ducks or something. I remember buying real ugly ties. We would go to the <laughs> thrift store and buy these awful ugly <laughs> ties. You know, it, it, you're right. I think that is one way you could express yourself, and you would just get yeah. desperate to be like, "I'm going to express myself somehow." Well, I've never seen any any of them, any of the Mormons uh, that yeah. I see like around. That's white shirt yet. Yeah. yeah. And uh, dark pants. Yeah. And then there's a tie, and there's always, <laughs> it's funny. always a little, <laughs> yeah, it's that's never funny. just a solid color. It's <laughs> that's a little bit of funny. flash. That's real funny. I'm going to notice that next time. <laughs> um, and of course, the name tag. Yeah, yeah. And then, yeah, and then you got your name tag. Oh, but so, it, w- it, w- it wouldn't have your name. It would be Elder somebody. Yeah, Elder Hamilton. Yeah. They wouldn't tell you. Elder RT Hamilton. Oh, really? Yeah. They wouldn't tell you? No. Why not? I don't know. They, they're allowed to tell you. Okay. I think. They wouldn't we tell were. you? They didn't tell me, oh, no. Oh, wow. I think. I don't know. They have different rules, different... But that would be... I don't know why they wouldn't be allowed to tell you their first name. <laughs> You're messing with them. People think we're crazy for so many reasons. <laughs> <laughs> why give them another one? Yeah. Here's a quote I wanted to read about our guest, Brian Hamilton. I know we've gone over time, but it's from Anthony Jeselnik, who had very nice things oh, to say about you. That's nice. I have a... I love... Yeah. You've heard it. I don't know. Have I? I don't know. (laughs) I would assume you have. Anthony's a friend of mine. Yeah, he said, I think Ryan Hamilton is amazing. I think he's going to be a giant star. He's one of those people where the more you watch him, the funnier he gets. You get into his rhythm and his world. It's great. Oh, that's very nice. Where was that? I don't Did you know. just call him and say? Ask? Yeah, yeah. It's just <laughs> <laughs> that's very nice. Yeah. Oh, so you hadn't seen that? Uh, uh, it was in an interview he did. Okay. Yeah. He was talking about people that make him laugh. I think, and your name oh. came up. Oh wow. Oh, that's yeah. Flattering. Oh, well, granted, there are a lot of Ryan Hamiltons. Maybe he was talking <laughs> yeah. about somebody <laughs> else. Your that, buddy from college. <laughs> that would be shocking. <laughs> But yeah, people people think that he is uh, the jerk that he appears to be, but he's a sweet guy. Yeah, he's always been a uh, really nice guy to me. I, I um, yeah, he's been a he's been a friend of mine, and that's a very flattering, nice thing for him to say to me. And mm-hmm. uh, yeah, he's he's uh, he has that that persona, and and but he's also uh, been very generous and kind to me. Yeah. Nice. And you are off to Australia after Victoria. And maybe, yeah. you know, in a couple of weeks, you're going to Australia, right? Uh, yeah. A couple, you, like mid October. Yeah. yeah. You said uh, you hadn't really traveled outside of North America. I have not. So this is like the really. First? I've, you know, I've done. Uh, been to Mexico and I've done That's some, North America. some cruise ships in like right. the Caribbean and stuff. <laughs> That's no man's so, land. Uh, it's pretty much the same. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so this will be my first, excuse me, big trip. Yeah, out of the country. Yeah, I'm a real uh, Idaho r- rube getting to, going out in the <laughs> so world. A, a comedic missionary going out into the. Uh, <laughs> That's right. right. Going to the. Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Sydney uh, Opera House. I. Uh, uh, yeah, the Sydney Opera House. That'll be amazing. Yeah, I'm really excited. I I've been working so much that I haven't. It hasn't really. I don't know. It's like it's like two trips away still. So I'm still. You know, I'm always focused on the what trips next. But so the next one is Victoria, and then what's after that? I've got a college in Florida after I get home, and then I think I have another college or something, and I think I have one night with. Uh, Drew Carey. Ah, And then great. I think I go to Australia. And then you got to figure out what season it is down there. I, from what I understand, someone told me they're going... It'll be spring. It'll be spring, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, it should be um, should be great. I'm excited. Yeah, You're going with Deb De Giovanni and yes. uh, Greg Barrent. Yes, yeah. both a uh, couple of my favorites. Are they? Yeah, I've liked. Uh, I mean, I've really liked Greg for a long time. I don't know Greg very well. I've met him a couple times, but I've always loved his stand up. And even when I first started, he was one of the first. Comedy Central specials that I latched onto and really was like, oh, this guy, who is this guy? Like, I got to figure who out and went and watched all his other stuff. Right. And then Deb. Did uh, you read his book? No, I haven't read. Oh, he's just not in that into you? Yeah. No, I haven't read it. I guess I should. You should. Yeah. Have you read it? No. Oh. But uh, I, I got it from the title. I don't need to read it. <laughs> <laughs> figured it out. Figured it out. So yeah. They, yeah, you could do that. Yeah. Right. Because you like writing. You said you wanted to. Uh, be like a Dave Barry type. How yeah. about a book? Oh, man. Well, I... Develop, yeah. Grow that brand. The Ryan Hamilton brand. I, I'm just... I would have to grow that skill and talent. I don't... I've never, you know, written anything beyond... What do you think Greg Barrett has written before that? <laughs> well, okay. Fair <laughs> enough. Yeah. But uh, I don't know. I would... Yeah, that would be amazing. I think undertaking writing a book is like one of the biggest, most daunting, hardest creative tasks out there. Mm -hmm. I agree. I'm always I've amazed. I've never written one. I mean, yeah. uh, authors and novelists, just the discipline that they have. I, it's what the writing I do is it another, you know, it's not nearly as intense or, or involved and you get immediate reaction from the audience. Writing a novel or a book, it's like more involved and intense and there's no feedback. You're just doing it. You're just out there alone. I can't imagine. It's like I always am in awe at that. It's amazing. I think you could do it. Oh, man. I would love to love to see, maybe. Ryan, we got to get out of here. Yeah, sorry. I just keep talking. No, no. I kept, I kept you here. Yeah. I'm going to see you in Victoria, and any of our listeners who are in the Victoria area should go check out the Bluebridge Comedy Festival where Ryan will be playing. Not sure the venue, but it's all online. Yeah. It's all online. I'm not sure the name of the venue myself. You'll be playing with Phil Hanley? Yeah, Phil Hanley and I are doing a show That'll together. That'll be a great show. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. All right. Thanks for coming down to the studio. Thank you, Guy. I appreciate it. It's always a pleasure. Always. Next time you're in town, come by, please. Okay. All right. And next week, as uh, unless somebody else comes to town and is yeah. available on a Sunday. Sure. But if not, we're going to have Brian Regan. <laughs> an interview with Brian Regan. I like how he gets bumped. Hey, the big shot. Keep bumping yeah, him. how about that? <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks for listening. See you next week.